click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends in this lecture we'll understand the concept of frequency division multiple axis and time division multiple axis multiple axis technologies are used for multiple users to access the system <music> multiple access technologies what is the meaning of multiple accessing multiple access means the entire mobile communication systems is being used by many users hence these technologies are very important because they are spectrum efficient the first technology that will be studying is frequency division multiple access there are many such technologies which have been mentioned here like fdma tdma spread spectrum access and so on fdma frequency division multiple access here every user is given a part of the frequency spectrum every other user is given some other part of the frequency spectrum means in the entire spectrum small small frequency bands are given to multiple users the advantage here is that we can accommodate many users in a single spectrum each user here is allocated a unique frequency band so that there is no interference between multiple users one question that comes to our mind is if the frequency is continuously allotted to a single user he may not be using it for the entire time hence the frequency goes waste hence what is done here is on demand frequency allocation is done the user demands the frequency whenever he wants to initiate a call in this case we are able to put multiple users using the spectrum that is available to us we all know that spectrum is very limited and we need to put or fit many users into that limited spectrum in this diagram we can see there is a frequency axis and there is a time axis the frequency axis is divided into multiple slots all the frequencies that have been transmitted or that have been used by multiple users are on the same time means everybody is simultaneously in the same time transmitting and receiving the frequencies but the channels that they are using or the frequencies that they are using is different following are the features of the fdma channel every fdma channel carries only one phone socket because the frequency is unique to a single user if not in use the channel is a waste means it sits idle very narrow band channels are given like 30 kilohertz to every users just in case to fit multiple users costly bandpass filters are required at the base stations for removal of radiations from other circuits and other users similarly rf filtering is required so that there is no adjacent channel interference we know one channel is used for transmission and after certain gap another channel is used for reception but the nearby channel is provided to other users if the filters are not proper or the filtering of the frequencies is not done properly then other channel may cross talk the channel that is been used by the user hence proper rf filtering is required because of the single antenna that is used for the base station and the mobile station that transmits and receives simultaneously costly duplexer circuits are also included so that the frequency separation is done properly the total number of channels in fdma is calculated as follows n gives the total number of channels that a fdma system can support which is equal to bt which is the total number of bandwidth or the total amount of bandwidth minus two times the guard bands upon the single channel frequency that is called as bc guard bands we know are required on both the side of the channel so that adjacent channel interference does not occur next we move on to tdma which is also known as time division multiple axis so in tdma the entire spectrum is divided into multiple time slots meaning say one frequency channel is divided into multiple time slots and given to different different users every user will transmit and receive in their respective time slots in tdma transmission is done in buffer and burst method which is a discontinuous method of transmitting the data 
in frequency division multiple axis continuously the data was getting transmitted which is not done here because the data is transmitted in buffer and burst method we require digital modulation techniques in which the data is transmitted in a digital format hence the data first needs to be converted into a digital data and then modulated using digital modulation techniques in the next slide we can see again we have a time axis and a frequency axis here the user are divided on the timeline and the frequency axis remains constant means suppose i take a 1 kilohertz frequency on 1 kilohertz frequency i have eight time slots in which eight different users can transmit their data after that eight time slots that is an entire frame again i'll have eight time slots in which the users can transmit their data tdma shares a single frequency for multiple users meaning one frequency is used for eight users if eight time slots are provided in the frame the data transmitted here is in a discontinuous manner or buffer and burst method the handoff here is easy the reason being if the user is transmitting in one time slot the mobile remains idle for other time slots and that time slot can be used to identify the power levels from the neighboring base station if the power levels are high than the current base station then handoff procedures may begin hence easy handoff is done in tdma rather than in fdma high synchronized overheads are required the reason is because we are using time slot to transmit data and the data being in a buffer and burst method we need to identify or give address to every single data hence the overhead used in the time frames is very high compared to in fdma less or no overhead is required here the guard slots are necessary to divide the time duration if not then the two users may overlap their data which is not required tdma is the most efficient method of transmission because on a single frequency we can have multiple users and if there is no user some other user can use that time slot hence on demand supply makes it much more efficient now we'll look on to how the tdma frame is been constructed as we can see first we have the preamble we have the information and then we have the trail bits preamble and trail bits are used for synchronization of the data from the transmitter to the receiver and vice versa information is divided into multiple slots depending on how many users are using the time duration here we have mentioned in slots every slot again has a trail bit data synchronization bit and guard bits trail bits and synchronization bits are used for synchronization of the data information or data actually carries the data message of the user guard bits are used if there is any delay of the packet transmission then it prevents from overlapping of the data with some other data hence guard bits are provided as empty slots or free time space for every user here we can see the tdma structure or the number of channels in the tdma are exactly same as given by fdma except for one value which is m m stands for the number of users that are using the tdma frame now we will see how to calculate the total number of channels in a tdma structure as we can see from the formula the tdma structure shows similar formula as n of fdma but the only difference here is of m m stands for the maximum users that are using a single tdma frame so n is given by or the number of channels is given by m into the total bandwidth minus twice of guard band upon the channel bandwidth thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and subscribe to ikeda